10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Welcome to Watchmen's Cry News from the Wall, your source for the truth and what's really happening today. Hello, my friends and fellow inmates. I'm Nathan Liao, coming to you from somewhere in the courtyard of Iron Curtain America. You're listening to the Watchmen's Cry News from the Wall, the program where we examine reality through the lens of truth. If you're taking notes, the website is watchmanscry.com. Ladies and gentlemen, another phase has begun for America. If you're a regular listener, you know the things that we talk about on this program. But if you happen to be new on this program, we talk about what time it is. We talk about where we are in the giant divine hourglass of God. Because these things are real. America is experiencing a great and mighty change. She is experiencing her demise. The good old USA is entering her final moments in history where the old America will cease to exist and a new America will arise. And it's going to be a new America that will no longer have a heart for good, but will exchange it for a heart of stone. A stony heart that is cold and pitted with the scars of a different drumbeat. And over the past few years, the Lord God Almighty has been warning America that these things were indeed coming to the land. And he has raised up voices to sound the alarm. And this ministry is one of them. And my friends, please pay attention to the things that I'm going to share on this program. Because I have a word from the Lord today. It has to do with America and the residents that abide within her shores. Again, folks. Great and mighty events are coming and are even starting to arrive. My sole purpose, my motivation, and my desire is to warn as many people as I can. So folks, please share this program with everyone that you know, with friends, with family, with everyone that you can because we need to get this warning out. We need to awaken as many people as possible in the remaining days that we have. Because that's the bottom line, folks. The foundation of the message has to do with the human soul. It has to do with finding Jesus and getting stronger with Jesus. Because he's coming soon, folks. But first, he's going to shake this earth. He's going to shake the church. A great and mighty shaking is approaching. Right now, he's judging America. He's also judging the nations. And his judgment that is now visiting this planet is going to play out in many, many categories. And we've talked about them. We've talked about how famine is coming to the land and how it's already arriving in America and in other places. We've talked about how economic collapse is going to come. America is going to experience a dollar crisis. These things are coming, folks. And as they do, eventually, for many people, the trip to the grocer is going to bring sorrow for some and panic for others. My friends, I cannot sugarcoat what time it is. And if you're awake, you know this. And your spirit knows it. Please pay attention to the things I'm going to share because there are events that are barreling down the prophetic highway. And they're coming toward us right now. And I'm going to go into several things. So please take the things in this program seriously. Our ministry is Watchman's Cry. And if you appreciate our vigilance, let us know with your support. Our address is Watchman's Cry, P.O. Box 157, Priest River, Idaho, 83856. Or you can go to our website and contact us there. And real quick, if you happen to be near the Priest River area, we're having awesome fellowship services now. We've been meeting on Saturday evenings, and we're meeting to worship Jesus. And guess what, folks? The Holy Spirit is showing up. And a great anointing has been showing up in our meetings to touch lives and and to refresh and heal the hurting and the wounded. So if you're nearby and you're thirsty for a drink from the well of God, 
you're welcome to join us. So if you're interested, you can go to my website at watchmanscry.com and in the contact link, email me and tell me that you would like to attend and, and then we'll go from there. All right, folks. Well, let's begin. On this program today, I'm going to talk about the main headline that's the unfolding and continuing saga of the Boston Marathon bombing. So I want to ask you to please listen to this program in its entirety and please share it with everyone that you know, because I'm also going to talk about a prophetic warning that is related to the Boston bombing. The Boston bombing is not the only event that has unfolded. It is one of the preliminary phases of things that are about to happen to America. And when these things happen, they're going to strike hard. They're going to strike without warning, and they're going to catch many people off guard. So again, my friends, please listen to this program and please take these matters to heart and to prayer. Now, two bombs exploded at the finish line of the Boston Marathon. And so far, three individuals were killed, including a, an eight-year-old child. Over a 100 people were injured. Now, I am examining this event through the lens of discernment. And as end-time Christians, we all need to be doing this. Because the bottom line of what is happening right now before our eyes is biblical prophecy in motion. And it's in very quick motion. The momentum is gathering speed. And as these things continue to unfold, we're going to see deception. We're going to see delusion. We're going to see and hear lies that have been crafted by the powers that be and by the minions of Satan. Right now, Operation Attack America is in motion. It is in play and it is going to continue to rattle and shake the very foundation of this country. Lest we forget, folks. We had the Aurora, Colorado Massacre, and then we had the Sandy Hook Massacre, and now we have the Boston Marathon bombing. And as I have been examining this story unfolds so far, and I want to be real careful on how I say this, folks, because I understand that there's a tendency to label anyone that questions the official report or the official story as a kook or a conspiracy theorist or someone that is paranoid or crazy. Only an individual who does not study and learn from history would say such a thing. Because history has repeatedly shown us that human nature is evil. Human nature is fallen. And that the pride of man can cause humans to do some very crazy and bizarre things. We have seen human beings act maniacal and demonic throughout history. Nazi Germany has answered the question on how far and how evil a population is able to be brainwashed into accepting. Soviet Russia had the gulag and the Siberian prison camps. Communist China, communist North Korea. Human rights are not an automatic thing with many populations in this world. And based on what we read in the scriptures, eventually the book of Revelation is going to start happening before our eyes. The tribulation will begin to unfold. And there will be a one world government that is a dictatorship, that is tyrannical, that does not honor human life, where many people are going to be killed for their beliefs. The saints of God are going to be overcome during this period. It's going to be a time that will shake this planet and be the worst period of time since man came to be upon this earth. Jesus said so. Those are his words. So if the tribulation period is going to show us and reveal to us governmental leadership that is devilish and bloodthirsty, and if most of us that are alive right now who are Christians are saying that we're in the end times, then common sense tells us that if we're in the end times and the tribulation period is very, very soon and governments are going to be bloodthirsty during the tribulation period, then that tells us, ladies and gentlemen, that the tide for respect for human life is going to change. The tide for the rule of law, the tide for the tide for personal rights of citizens is going to vaporize. And between now and then, we're going to see the transition where governmental leadership may act one way now, but it's going to morph into this new creature that acts totally different. And as that change occurs, we're going to notice it. And ladies and gentlemen, based on what I'm observing It is happening now. The tide is turning. Because many of the reports regarding the Boston bombing, in my opinion, are laced with contradictions and suspicion and convenient omission. The official story does not add up 
in several categories. Already, I am observing many holes in the official development story. And it appears that in the eyes of the powers that be, the two brothers who, who started out as suspects have been tried and found guilty by the court of the media and by public opinion. Now, for those that may say, Nathan, the media wouldn't lie. And the witnesses that are coming forth and saying what they saw, they're legitimate. Why shouldn't we believe them? Here's why, folks. Because the modus operandi in the past has showed us that we have to be very vigilant. We have to be careful. Folks, right now, the Boston bombing is one event, but it is one of many events that are all happening at the same time. Let us not forget the Second Amendment is, is under attack right now in America. And there are states, one by one, that are caving in and stepping on the Second Amendment of the Constitution. There are several states that have decided by their progressive representatives that Americans cannot be trusted to own firearms. We're watching history in the making right now, folks. So we need to ask the question, why all of a sudden is the Second Amendment under attack? Then we have to ask the other questions. Why is Homeland Security purchasing so many bullets? Over a billion bullets have now either been ordered or are in the process of being delivered. Over a billion. Enough ammo to support more than 20 years of Iraq war. Why? So the Second Amendment is under attack. Homeland Security is buying a lot of bullets. And then we hear that Homeland Security is also investing in their own fleet of ATVs. MRAP vehicles. Have you seen them, folks? Those mine-resistant vehicles? Weighing 15 tons, built to withstand the explosion of IEDs? Why is gold under attack? Why is the precious metals market being manipulated right now? Why do the numbers not add up when we observe the official statistics of America regarding the economy, the unemployment rate, the jobs market? Why are banks being bailed out? Why is the real estate market being manipulated? Folks, I can go on and on and on, but I have a lot of questions. Why are these things happening? Why is Obama on record as saying that change is coming, that there's going to be a redistribution of wealth? And then we have Obamacare that's coming, and doctors are quitting their jobs because they are seeing that Obamacare is going to destroy their careers. Folks, America is being dismantled right now before our eyes. And then when we look at the spiritual realm, behind the scenes, I have been talking about the spiritual perspective of America's downfall for years now. We've discussed how the New World Order and the Illuminati and the powers that be announced to the world during the Olympic opening ceremony that change was coming, the phoenix was going to rise from the ashes, that the New World Order was here. We have shared and talked about how during the inauguration that occurred just a few months ago, very, very pivotal events occurred because America turned a corner and gateways and portals to the underworld were opened. And I'm going to talk about that in a moment. Ladies and gentlemen, as I am witnessing and watching what occurred in this bombing event, I am having many problems with how this story has developed. And lest we forget, folks, the stories that are reported and the stories that make it to the official propaganda machine of the press is usually the same report that makes it into the history books. What that means is history is written by the people with the quill, with the news program, with the controlled press, and history is written by the voices behind the state-controlled microphone. And today we're watching history being written by the Ministry of Propaganda. I know that to some my words may sound radical, and to some my words may sound cynical, but folks, today the history of Oz is the meal that has been accepted by the citizen munchkins as long as they stay hypnotized by the opium-tainted news reports from the Emerald City. And today as I speak, we are witnessing the arrival of the great scheme of Satan to deceive Nation USA into becoming the USSA. And how does this happen? How does a country morph into a new creature? Because a country consists of humans, of people, of citizens. So how does the country change? How do they do it? Well, first of all, the people need to have their thoughts occupied with chaos and madness. And the powers that be need to change the thinking. They change the meals. They change the influence. It occurs by washing away the old traditions and bringing in new policy. But it does not happen in a vacuum. It requires chaos, confusion, and fear. And it requires a population that cannot think rationally. 
It requires citizens that are too medicated and preoccupied to care. It requires citizens who are blind to the truth and to the light. And it requires citizens who are blind because they're accustomed to darkness. Folks, based on what I'm observing up to this point, and if I am wrong, I'll repent. I'll say that out loud. But based on what I'm observing right now, the Boston Marathon bombing appears to be a false flag event that has gone awry. And it appears that the official story is fiction and full of lies. And it appears that it is laced with red herrings and orchestrated synthetic news. Now, we may never know what role the two brothers had in this. The older brother, Tamerlan, is dead. He was executed. By the way, there are conflicting reports that he was actually caught alive and made to strip down and then was run over by a police vehicle and then was shot and killed. But then there's another report that says little brother ran over him while the cops were handcuffing him. But witnesses are now coming out saying that the cops did it. But the lying media is telling the munchkins of Oz a different story. And then we heard about little brother hiding in the boat from Thursday night to Friday evening. The official story says that there was a shootout with him and his older brother. His older brother got killed. He ran over his older brother. That's Thursday night. And then he drove through the police barricade in his SUV and got away. Now, first of all, folks, Boston was in lockdown. There were helicopters everywhere. So we're led to believe that he busted through a roadblock and got away. And he was able to jump out of his car, wander through a neighborhood, and then he found a boat to hide in. So that was Thursday night. And the official story also says that he had been wounded. So Thursday night, he's dripping blood, and he wanders through the neighborhoods of Boston and finds a boat. He lifts the tarp and crawls under it, and he hides in there until the next day, Friday night. And the reason that he was discovered is because an observant citizen, i.e. the owner of the boat, noticed that his tarp that was on his boat was awry, so he went to fix it. And when he walked up to the boat, he saw the blood. So he left the property, went to the neighbors, called the cops. The cops came and they riddled the boat with bullets. And then little brother climbed out and he was wounded in the neck because they say he shot himself in the mouth with his own gun. Now, that's the official story. However, there is an image that is all over the Internet now that shows him climbing out of the boat and he is not wounded at all. He's not shot. There's no blood on him. So when he got out of the boat, he was surrounded. The spotlight is on him in the image. It looks to be a spotlight either from a police car or possibly it's from a helicopter. They had him surrounded and they took him peacefully without a fight. But then between the time he climbed out of the boat and the time that he made it to headquarters, he got shot in the throat. So they say that he put a gun to his mouth and shot himself. However, there are others that say the police shot him. And then one SWAT person let it leak out that he was actually sliced in the throat. So they were trying to kill him because they had to silence him. He wasn't supposed to talk. Now, side note, folks. The official story says he ran Thursday night. He got on the boat Thursday night, and then Friday he was discovered. Now, there is another story that the media is saying, and this is why I have to scratch my head and say, really, you guys need to get your notes together. Because whoever's writing the script is doing some sloppy script writing. Because there's another report that says that between Thursday and Friday, before Little Brother was caught, he took the time to tweet what was going on. Now, what's wrong with that statement? Well, if he's hiding in a boat, how did he tweet? Well, he could have done it with his phone, Nathan. Really? So if he used his phone, they could have located him. Well, maybe he went to an internet cafe and did it. You know, that's about as absurd as what we hear about Tim McVeigh was taken into custody because he was going down the highway driving a vehicle without a license plate. You know, if these alleged terrorists or suspects are smart enough to cook up such a destructive bomb, why can't they think ahead and remember that if you tweet somebody, you're going to get caught? So how did little brother tweet? They're not telling us that part. Folks, there are so many parts of this story that make no sense. They don't add up. And because they don't add up, I have to just conclude one thing, that we are being fed lie after lie. I have an audio soundbite of a witness who called into a radio station who says that they watched the police take Tamerlan into custody and the police run over him 
Now, the official story is saying little brother ran over Tamerlan with his stolen SUV. But listen to this, folks. Good morning, Linda. How are you? John, Jerry, and Kirk with you. Oh, it's been a long night. I'll bet it has. Uh, you live on Dexter Street, correct? Uh, my boyfriend does, but I was just spending the night. Okay, and tell us what happened. Uh, give us the timeline, what you saw. Uh, um, we rushed to the front of um, in the front of the house. It's a two-family house, and um, into his roommate's room, um, where we saw the um, the first suspect um, get hit by. Um, a police SUV, and then after he was hit, um, shot multiple times. Um, minutes later, an ambulance had arrived, um, put the suspect into the ambulance, and then off. And did you say that you the suspect was hit by a police SUV? In other words, a vehicle hit him first? Correct. Wow. You know, I, I, I can also say, um, you know, from, from what, what we saw early this morning, um, I, I'd be hard-pressed. To, to think that he was actually pronounced dead at the hospital. I mean, from the injuries that he incurred um, in the street, I, I would say he was, he was probably dead when he was put in the ambulance. Interesting. Now, listen to this other soundbite from the aunt of the two brothers, and she says that she believes this whole thing was a setup and that it was staged by the powers that be. And as she is talking, note that the news interviewers try to distract her with statements like, you mean somebody else tried to set them up but not the authorities? And she says, what are you talking about? In other words, what she meant was, who stands to gain from this setup? Of course it's the powers that be. So listen to this. Uh, let's go back to the aunt now speaking in Canada. Naturally. I guess, you know, whatever I feel will come out. Natural. It's so natural. What is so different about it? Have you talked to police at all, or have they... I haven't talked. Nobody is contacting me. I called FBI first, line. FBI line. If you have any hints, let us know. That's the number I called, because, hey, knowing these two boys, knowing, believing, strongly believing they wouldn't do this, that's why I called. What did you But I called not right away. First reaction was anger. How could this happen how could this do this for what for the sake of what what believes what prompted them to this this reaction but then i went through material whatever is in there Mm -hmm. quickly quickly my first call to fbi they could not have done this where are evidence all you're showing that's just the footage two guys are walking and i found it strange tamerlan is walking in, in the front uh jahar is in the back, why wouldn't they come together? Just, you know, together as brothers as I used to know them. So then are you suspicious that maybe they really did do this? No, I'm suspicious that this was staged. The picture was staged. By who? Whoever needs this. But why would Whoever they is your... looking for those who need to be blamed for, for, for uh, the, these attacks. So you think they're being set up by someone else, not the authorities? You think they're being set up by someone else? Who, what do you mean, somebody else? Well, who is, who is interested in this case? When you're blowing up people and you want to bring attention to something for some purpose, you know, you do that math. But why don't you do that math? Why me? Police As say- I said, I'm used to being set up. Before I left uh, former Soviet Union countries, That's how I lived. Well, there it is, folks. So who do we believe? For some of you, you may find it difficult to hear what I'm saying and to consider what I'm saying because in your eyes and in your mind, Nation America could never do something as hideous as inventing an entire plot with fiction. And if that's you, that's fine. You're entitled to that opinion. But ladies and gentlemen, please know this. This is not just one event. We have watched over and over massacres happen. Sandy Hook, Aurora, Colorado, as I stated earlier. We have watched these events happen, and the stories continue to have holes in them. The stories continue to not add up. Now, several months ago, we talked about this, and we talked about how demonic spirits are going to play their role in causing America to evolve into a police state. And in order for this to happen... Demonic spirits have to actually be involved. Demonic spirits from another realm. And folks, remember this? During the inauguration, we talked about the invasion of Babylon, 
How we found in Jeremiah chapter 39 two, we can see that when Babylon invaded Jerusalem, the princes of Babylon came in and they did things. In the same way, America is going to be invaded by the principalities with the spirit of Babylon. And these underworld creatures are demonic creatures. We even have their names. Nurgle will enter America and conduct their deceiving operation. And ladies and gentlemen, it is happening now. Folks, we did a whole series on this. Nurgle is the demon in charge of the secret police of hell. Nurgle is an expert at Nazi tactics. The demon Nurgle, who serves Satan, has been at this for a long, long time and has done this in other countries and other nations. And that is why I am sharing this information because more of these events are coming. These demons, these spirits, these principalities that have now invaded America are here and they are writing their script for how this thing is going to play out. Folks, the game is afoot and it's in play. But unfortunately, it's not a game. It's real life. It's reality. And it's going to happen before our very eyes. A lot of people are looking at this and limiting themselves to the lens of the physical. And we can't do that, folks. If we are the remnant of God, if we are the wise ones, and if we have discernment, we have to see the big picture. Now, in order for these demonic entity spirits to take over America and change the way that America conducts its laws... They need to introduce a lot of terrorist type events. They need these events to change the people into a population of fear and to convince the people that they have to accept whatever the government tells them. The lockdown needs to be acceptable. And what is it about that word, ladies and gentlemen? Terrorism. It seems that people stop thinking when they hear it, when they know what happened. They just accept the accusation. Oh, the two brothers are terrorists? Well, then string them up. They're guilty then. If Bill O'Reilly says that the brothers need to burn in hell, then I guess that's true. I'll turn off my brain and accept what Bill O'Reilly says or what Mayor Bloomberg says or what Obama says or Biden or Big Sister. Folks, is this the way that we're supposed to conduct ourselves with our vigilance? And that leads me to another point right now that I am very, very concerned about. I'm very disturbed about how... I'm watching this thing take place and unfold. But folks, I hope that I'm able to communicate what I'm about to say. Do you folks remember the passioned responses from the freedom-loving Americans when their gun rights were threatened a few weeks ago? Do you remember how people came out of the woodwork, the NRA people, and they have their spokesmen, their representatives, their famous entertainers who defend The Second Amendment, people like Chuck Norris and Ted Nugent came forth and they made some pretty good arguments on how you can't take away the Second Amendment because you take that away, what else will they take away? And they presented some very, very valid arguments. And the community that believes in these things, the patriots, the Christians, the libertarians, those that understand the importance of the Constitution came together and they stood shoulder to shoulder And they said, no, we're not going to take it. You cannot take away our Second Amendment. You remember that, folks? This is just a few weeks old. Well, since this event happened, I noticed that many of these same individuals have found themselves with a case of dementia and memory loss because I am now hearing rhetoric. And this is the same kind of rhetoric that I remember hearing when George W. was the president. Right after 9-11, he passed the Patriot Act and Fox News justified it. And all of the Christians justified it because George Bush, after all, is a Republican. He's a right winger and he wouldn't do anything wrong. Those rules are for good. They're, they're against those bad Muslims. So the Patriot Act Part 1 was passed and then we saw Part 2. And then we started seeing a lot of other freedom killing laws come forth. And Christians said nothing. For seven years, from 2001... To 2008, when he left office, for the most part, the individuals that listen to Fox News and who go to World Net Daily and read all of those articles had no problem with it. Rush Limbaugh had no problem with it. And I watched how people just allowed the country to slither away because they believed that the leader would not hurt them. 2008 then came. Obama got elected. And Obama has not made it a secret that he has different ideas, ideologies, beliefs. 
He believes in the redistribution of wealth. He has socialistic beliefs. And in my opinion, he has communist type beliefs. He was groomed by communist type people. He's also a Muslim sympathizer. So these same individuals who got together and rah-rah the Patriot Act then got together and said, Obama's bad. He's a devil. Shame on Obama. He wants to take away our guns. And Ted Nugent went on news programs and they talked about how bad it was to take away the Second Amendment. Okay, folks, now this is the part that absolutely makes no sense. Because after the Boston bombing, when the news stated that the two brothers were Islamic jihadists and were Muslims before they were even arrested, before there was proof that these accusations are true, the news had tried them and found them guilty in the court of public opinion. And because they did that, then the public wanted blood. The public wanted them dead. The public wanted to see the cops mow them down, kill them, kill those Muslims. And I saw, in fact, I printed it out. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but Mr. Ted Nugent, who believes in the Constitution's Second Amendment, wrote an article and World Net Daily published it. And he says in here, quote, the jihadist punk in custody is obviously guilty of committing murder, terrorist acts, and a whole book of other crimes. And then he goes on to complain that, unfortunately, justice won't be served quickly. He's going to sit in prison for a while and he's going to be fed and taken care of. And that's wrong because his neck needs to be stretched in public, in front of everybody. We need to just execute him and According to Ted Nugent, who believes in the Second Amendment, the Fifth Amendment doesn't matter. The Fifth Amendment has to do with due process. It has to do with you are innocent until proven guilty. It has to do with habeas corpus. How does that happen? In the way that we treat the accused. After his article was posted on World Net Daily, you can go read it, folks. Look at the comments. Because comment after comment, yeah, you're right, Ted, let's string them up. Let's kill them. He's guilty. And as I was reading these comments, I was thinking to myself, are you serious? The same guy that promotes the Second Amendment is spitting on the Fifth Amendment? And then one person actually said that. They said, you guys, we need to let him have his day in court before we condemn him. And the one person that said that started getting hammered and attacked. People accused him of being some liberal. If you don't like America, you need to leave. We don't need your kind here. Get out of here, etc., etc. So it appears that all Satan needs to convince Americans to throw away the Constitution is to just give them a few terrorist acts. Let them have a few bombings. Whether it's done by real jihadists or whether it's a false flag, it doesn't matter. All you got to do is just do it and the people galvanize and throw away their rights. Ladies and gentlemen, I saw the images I saw the news reports. I saw the, the video of how Boston allowed itself to be placed in lockdown. Boston shut down because they were after one guy. All of the transportation stopped. The subway stopped. It became a no-fly zone. People couldn't go to work. Everyone was under house arrest. You couldn't leave. And if you did leave, you were going to get in trouble. Martial law came to Boston to find one guy. Did Boston complain about it? No. Because when they did find the little brother in the boat, after he was found, there was a parade for the SWAT team. Yay! Thank you for making us prisoners. Thank you for making us live in this courtyard of the Iron Curtain USA. Yay! Thank you. Thank you for bringing the police state to Boston. Yay! I didn't get to go to work. I didn't get to go buy food for my family, but thank you. They cheered. They had a parade. Yay! You sequestered us with no rights. And then you went up and down our streets. Yay! And then you went inside of houses without warrants. And you searched houses without warrants. And you dragged people out of their houses. Yay! Folks, Boston allowed itself to get raped by Homeland Security. It allowed itself to get ravaged. Throw away the requirement for warrants. Let them come in your house. Well, Nathan, they had guns. They had heavy weaponry. Yeah, they did. And guess what that's called, ladies and gentlemen? That's called a police state. The militarization of the police forces is now here. They didn't look like cops, by the way. They looked like soldiers. And they were dressed like soldiers. They had the same gear as soldiers. So posse comitatus is now thrown out the window. And folks, as I'm watching this whole event, 
I was asking myself, if God was looking down from heaven, and if God was thinking, okay, America, let's see how you react to this. Are you going to allow yourself to listen to slander and just judge freely a person without following the rules that you know or you're supposed to follow? Let's find out what you're going to do. And, well, now we know, folks, don't we? Now we know that if the news says that someone's guilty, that means they are. And it's easy to be unconcerned about this until, what if it happens to you? What if they say you're guilty? What if they said your wife or your spouse, your children, your nephews, your parents? They're guilty. We know they're guilty. They're a part of this belief system. Therefore, they're guilty. They're terrorists. And what if in the future, Christians are going to be accused of being terrorists? or evil, or against the state, or enemies of the state, enemy combatants, insurgents, etc., without legal due process. How are the citizens going to feel then? How is Ted Nugent going to feel then? And if you happen to be listening to this program and you read that article on World Net Daily by Ted Nugent, and you posted, well, I, I believe that the guy's guilty, so there. I don't, I don't have a problem with it, Nathan. He's a Muslim. They deserve to die, all those Muslims. Ladies and gentlemen, the Bible is very, very clear. The way that we treat others is the same way we're going to be judged. And based on what I have observed, it is very apparent that this thing was a psychological analysis, litmus test, to find out what the people would do. You throw in a little bit of chaos and you garnish it with fear, and then you marinate it with a little bit of unknown, and due process is thrown out the window. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm not trying to be rude as I'm saying these words, but I'm very concerned. Now, folks, if you are a freedom-loving patriot, please do not fall for this. Because the manner in which you condemn others may be the same manner that you will be condemned. Now, what if the two brothers didn't act alone? I know that they said that the little brother is confessing that it was just him and his big brother, Tamerlane. They did it alone. They had no funding. No one else helped them. That's the latest media report. But then we have to include this. The United States knows how to get a confession. So where are we in a timeline? Here's where we are. We are in a dangerous precedent right now. I can see that the next phase of the judgment is going to come to a city near you. And I'm going to talk about that later, by the way. But now that they know that when terrorism is introduced, martial law is easy. The people don't care. And they'll clap for their chains. And they will clap. For their slavery. Man, Nathan, those are harsh words. Folks, the reason that I am being so candid right now is because I have a warning of an event that I saw happen. God gave me another prophetic. Actually, God gave me several prophetic dreams recently. I'm going to share those later on in this program. But as I have watched this thing unfold, it has given me an uncomfortable confirmation that the prophetic dreams that I had are going to happen. And after those things occurred that I'm about to share, we're going to see America get on the fast track to her demise, the fast track to the last days. America has rounded a corner, and the winds of great change are now blowing against her. And as more of these type of events come, we're going to see a separation occur among the citizens of America. Now, we've already gone around the turning point. It's too late to go back. It's too late to slow it down. We have already gone around the turning point. So now what we need to do is figure out a way to steer ourselves and navigate our own lives because the SS America is now moving into new waters. And these new waters that SS America is now floating in, for most people, are uncharted waters. Most people are going to see America turn into something they do not recognize. Now, I've been talking about that also. We're watching it happen in the economy. And it's some slow changes. But as more events start happening, folks, the United States is going to become an unrecognizable creature that is going to marvel. The rest of the world is going to look at America and say, how could this have happened to her? America used to be the bastion of freedom. America used to be the home of the free and the brave. But now she's the home of the slaves, of the inmates and the fearful. America has entered these new waters, and as I said, they're uncharted for most, but for the minions of the underworld, this is common territory. It is chartered territory. Nathan, what do you mean the minions from the underworld? This is what I mean, folks. There was a sleeping giant, 
a sleeping monster creature who was locked up in isolation. And he was confined to the bottomless pit under the earth. And in times past, he was allowed to awaken and come out of hibernation and roam the earth. And he left his footprints when he made his rounds. His footprints were the beastly empires that rose up for a season in man's history. They were the empires that have impacted man's history. They were the powerful, tyrannical, and bloodthirsty empires. And in their time, they plowed the earth and they oppressed man and ravished women and they killed little babies. They were the beast empires of the past. Assyria, Babylon, Persia, Greece, they've come and gone. And in the natural mind of man, they were merely kingdoms with clever leaders. But in the spiritual realm, they had a beastly, satanic, fallen angel influence with the help of evil spirits and the dragon, Satan. And once again, ladies and gentlemen, the bottomless pit is now opening. And the creature from the bog of hell is being awakened and he's going to make an appearance. Now, folks, please hear what I'm saying right here. In these end times, this creature is going to once again rise up. And when I'm talking about this creature, I mean a demonic creature from hell. And he's going to be like one of those giant underworld reptiles from a Hollywood movie. But he's going to be a spirit. And it's not going to be a movie. It's going to be real life. And folks, it's happening right now. It's begun. It's been occurring over the last few years. And I've talked about it. The inauguration was a part of it. Behind the scenes, the infiltration began. The doorways, the gateways, the portals of hell's underworld have started opening. The invasion of spirits is underway. It is in play. And as it occurs, events are going to happen on the news. Events, folks. Weird events. Confusing events. Diabolical and unbelievable events are going to happen. And as these things do for the people of America, for the citizens, we're going to watch and see and witness a huge potion of deception. And it's going to be released into the air. Great deception, folks. And deception makes it hard for people to know and believe the truth. Deception causes people to believe a lie. This brings me back to my original point. As we have watched the Boston bombing, We're watching it happen now. We are watching deception. Ladies and gentlemen, this is playing out in the real world. While at the same time, demonic entities are pulling many strings. And most people don't get this. They don't get it. And they will not get it. Most people are too blind to get it. Now again, ladies and gentlemen, these are not the only things that are going to happen. And it's not just starting now. This is the culmination of Years of warning that I've been doing on this program. That's what Watchman's Cry is. That's what we do. Seek God. Seek discernment. Seek His wisdom. Seek His understanding. Seek His Word. And share it with you. The Scriptures tell us that because He has compassion on His people, He tries to warn them first so that they can prepare and get ready. And then after the warning is given, the people have a choice to believe it or to deny it, to reject it to mock it, to scoff it. And most of the time, the sad reality is that most people reject the prophetic warning. Even in this day, even in this late hour, even when we can read in the scriptures that in the last days, God will pour out his spirit on all flesh and sons and daughters will prophesy. Young men would see visions, old men dream dreams. The Holy Spirit would be poured out on God's people to warn them what time it is. And that is happening right now. I say this many times on these programs. Ladies and gentlemen, I am not the only one getting prophetic dreams. This is happening in a very awesome Holy Spirit-inspired phenomenon right now in this late hour. There are young people, old people, young teenagers, people from all walks of life are having prophetic dreams where they are seeing glimpses of events that are coming to America and to this world. Now, is all of this a coincidence? No. The reason this is happening is because God loves you. And God wants you to know that the hour is very late. So he's showing people glimpses. And there's a good chance. If you're a regular listener, you know what I'm talking about. Many of you have had glimpses. Folks, this is happening 
Because great and mighty events are coming to this planet. And God wants every one of us to be ready. He wants our hearts to be prepared. He wants our hearts to be renewed and restored and refreshed. But at the same time, while God is doing this, while He is trying to awaken His children, there are some that reject this. They reject this spiritual gift. They say God does not do this in the last days. And ladies and gentlemen, let me just say this. If you happen to believe that theology, let me encourage you to read the book of Revelation, the final book that tells us and shows us and reveals to us the events that are going to visit this planet at the very end of time before Jesus returns. During the tribulation period, we see that God is going to raise up two witnesses that are going to be anointed by the Holy Spirit. And their message is going to be repentance. And their message is going to be to tell the people to get their hearts right. They're going to be showing the glimpses that God revealed to them. They're going to plead with the people to get their hearts right. But even then, most of society will reject their warning message. Why? Because man's heart would rather be in the darkness than in the light. I know that there's some people out there that say, Nathan, I know that you say that God gives you prophetic dreams and glimpses, etc., but I don't believe you. You know what, folks? If that happens to be you, then so be it. Go your merry way. Remain in your condition of denial. But for the rest that have the eyes to see and the ears to hear, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Folks, this world is about to be shaken mightily. And several years ago, the Holy Spirit gave me a prophecy that judgment had begun and that a great economic upheaval would come to America. And I published this prophecy on April the 18th, 2008. And God warned of things that would arrive. Some of those things have started. Some of those things are still approaching. But they're going to happen, folks. The poisoning of the waters has started. The drought, it came. The abandonment of the United States dollar has begun. The robbing of the pensions is getting ready to happen. Famine is arriving. Destitute people are becoming more and more commonplace. Great heartache and lamentations and sorrow is arriving upon this land. The invasion of darkness is starting to overcome and overshadow many portions of the land. And we've also begun to see the invasion of demonic entities that will change people into hearts that are unrecognizable, that will change governmental leadership into making legislative choices that will forever darken the future of America. And I've been talking about these things for years, ladies and gentlemen. If you're a regular listener, you know this. And eventually, America is going to be attacked in warfare. I saw American cities attacked. And in the last few years, as many of these things have been shared, so much has happened to America. The dismantling has begun. The demise has begun. The evaporation of this country has begun. Unfortunately, we're just getting started because so much more is still coming. And I don't like to say this, but the lamp of the past is going to become overshadowed by a tsunami of darkness over America. And today, I have to share a new parcel of warnings. So again, folks, please take notes. Get a pen and paper, and please consider the things that you're about to hear. Now, for the person that may be asking, Nathan, Doom, why do you do this? Why are you sharing these things? Here's why, folks. Because it's the truth. Because God is judging this land. Because God has stated over and over and pleaded and cried out through His voices that America needed to turn back to Him and repent, but it didn't happen. And God pleaded and try to awaken many of the spiritual leaders from those huge corporate big box churches to awaken their people that judgment was coming. And they resisted. They didn't want to talk about it. And thus, the people weren't challenged to repent. So as a result, the condition of spiritual status quo has been allowed to continue. Spiritual darkness in so many souls has been allowed to continue. Biblical illiteracy and a famine for the word of God has been tolerated and been allowed to continue. God has to do something about it. So God is going to shake His church. He's going to shake His people. And it's going to happen by judging the land, by judging America, and by judging other nations. So that's what time it is right now, folks. This is the reality. This is the spiritual weather report. God's going to allow the forces of darkness 
and the forces of evil and the minions of Satan to take over America because America has resisted her heritage. So God has taken a step back and said, okay, if you don't want to place your trust in me, then have at it. Let's see if you can rescue yourself from a whirlwind. So the tornadoes and twisters of darkness are going to plow the land under, folks. And it's going to play out through the puppets from hell, the humans that have allowed themselves to become the marionettes of the powers of darkness are going to steer America down the river Styx. God's going to let it happen. And this is the reality that is very sad, folks. The future of America is going to find itself cast into a cauldron of confusion with an end game to bring about the one world government, the new world order. So as America morphs into this new creature, in the future, the world is going to change. And to achieve the change, the new world order cannot tolerate the America of old. The America of old will not function in the new world order, so it must be dismantled. And in their eyes, the Constitution must also be changed. And having America possessing the world's reserve currency does not fit their plan. So the United States dollar must lose its reserve status. This is going to happen, folks. And as this plays out, it's going to affect everyone. Because as the dollar loses its reserve status, the economic forces of this world will see a reaction. It will be called loss of purchasing power, inflation. Prices are going to climb. And over the past few weeks, I have watched very chaotic weather hit the world markets. Those of you that are paying attention, you've seen this happen. Gold and silver has been under attack. Why? Why are the precious metals tanking? Is it a coincidence? Is it the result of a free market economy? No, it's not. What we are witnessing is market manipulation, which is also a part of their plan. And week by week, we're watching the dollar get abandoned. We are watching different nations make arrangements with one another to purchase products without using the American dollar. We are seeing China make arrangements with many, many other nations. We are watching the the BRIC alliance rise up. The BRIC alliance is the alliance of nations that totally omits the dollar. And it's an acronym, B-R-I-C-S. That stands for Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa. Just a few weeks ago, Australia also signed an agreement to stop using the dollar. China is making these agreements with nations in the Middle East. It's starting to snowball and gather momentum. And eventually, folks, much of the world will no longer use the dollar. And when that happens, it's going to be wake-up time. For the many Americans that have no idea this is coming, this is going to be a very hard wake-up. We're going to see it in the prices of food at the store. Folks, America is being dismantled right now, and God has been trying to warn. And whether or not we as Americans pay attention or whether we don't, the statistics are still accumulating the numbers. And the numbers don't lie because week by week, the statistics for America reveal her decline. They reveal that the middle class is being butchered right now, that unemployment is still growing, that the labor force is shrinking. The stats reveal that the Eurozone is in chaos. Unemployment is running rampant also in the Eurozone. And then recently we saw the news report about Cyprus, that tiny little island country in the Eurozone. They shut down their banks. They almost defaulted on their debt. And then they were told that they could be rescued if they robbed the bank accounts of their citizens. So that's what they did. So now we have watched the New World Order provide a litmus test. And they chose a small little country to do it where they robbed the innocent of their life's savings. So robbing of citizens has now become legalized. It's playing out right now. Most Americans may say, so what? That happened to them? I'm not worried about it. Well, here's the deal, folks. That was a test because that thing is going to come over here. And while all of this is going on, the media spins the information and dismisses reality. And meanwhile, while the stock market is climbing to the moon, which they say is a good sign, they're dismissing that the reason that the stock market is climbing is because the dollar is losing value. You know, folks, Zimbabwe's stock market climbed in value too. High numbers simply mean that the dollar has no value. So while all of this is happening, most people are snoozing. And they're still going through their routines, walking with no concern. Is it good to stay asleep? 
Is it better to stay in the dark? And I thank God for those of you that are awake, the remnant. Now, since we are talking about the remnant, let me say this. The remnant has become a buzzword in these end times to mean those who are awake, those who know what's going on. And among those who are in the remnant, we could divide the huge pool of remnant individuals into subgroups because not all of them are thinking the same. Not all of them prioritize the same. Some of them hold their spiritual condition at the highest priority. Others hold patriotism at the highest priority. And then there's others who hold knowledge and the discipline of prepping at the highest priority. And then some hold knowledge of the new world order at the highest priority. There are others that hold self-defense and guns at the highest priority. And, and when we consider all of the priorities that I just mentioned, folks, here's the question. Are all of them correct in their focus? Because if all of them are right, that means that there's no wrong priority. And can that be true? Here's the answer, folks. Some priorities can be wrong and misplaced. And in the next few minutes, I am going to share some prophetic glimpses that I had. But before I do, I need to speak about these priorities because the priorities that the remnant have are going to determine the outcome. Now, I serve Jesus. I serve my Savior. And I trust in His blood sacrifice from the cross. I trust in His resurrection. And I also know this, folks. Without Him... Without God, we're lost. I'm saying this because a priority that, that neglects Him will not succeed. I'm saying this because today I have a warning that I want to share, and God allowed me to, to see a, a new glimpse of what was coming here to America. And according to what I saw, there are going to be some people that consider themselves remnant who are going to be making some bad decisions in the coming future possibly in the near future. And they're going to make these bad decisions because right now they have the wrong priority. So let me just start by sharing the prophetic dreams that God gave me. Now, several weeks ago, I had three prophetic dreams all in the same night, one after the other. Now, in the first prophetic dream, I was standing in a downtown area of some city in the United States. I do not know what city I was in, but the street had three lanes of traffic all going in one direction. And on each side of the street were buildings that were three to four stories tall. And suddenly from behind me, four or five armored artillery vehicles passed me and they stopped abruptly right in front of one of the buildings that was on my left side. And these vehicles looked like those Department of Homeland Security artillery vehicles. Some of you have probably heard about the 2700 MRAPs that Homeland Security purchased, those military mine resistant vehicles. And as they arrived and abruptly came to a halt, suddenly there were either SWAT team or Homeland Security agents. I didn't count them exactly, but there was about 15 to 20 SWAT team tactical DHS officers. And when they got out of their vehicles, they were wearing the tactical gear and it appeared that they were going to serve a warrant on one of the buildings that was to my left. And when they got out of their vehicles, suddenly on both sides of the street from the rooftops, men rose up on each side of the street. There were about maybe 10 to 15 on the left side and 10 to 15 on the right side. So as they stood up, they aimed their weapons down to the, the SWAT team and they started firing down on them and they mowed all of them down. And as this occurred, while the bullets were firing down on them, I was pleading with them to stop, but it was too late because they ambushed the government officials. I was just so overwhelmed with sorrow and shock and, and disbelief because I understood what had just happened. And I started to scream, what have you done? Why have you done this? Because I knew that this meant that everything from this point on was going to change for America. I knew that because this attack had happened, this ambush had happened, that the rules we're going to change. That laws and legislation were going to cascade. I knew that this was going to cause these people to be labeled something that at one time they weren't, but they relabeled themselves and they became enemies of the state. This was going to change America forever. And then the dream was over. And then instantly a new dream started. And in the second dream, I was inside of a building looking out of a, a window. It, it might have been a, a motel room. 
and I was somewhere in the southwest of the United States. I'm very, very sure that's where I was. The south, southwest. And as I was looking out of this motel room, I could see about 50 to 75 feet away from my window was the highway, the street. And the street was a four-lane highway, two in one direction, two in the other. But there was a march that was happening, and it was a march with tens of thousands of individuals. And these individuals were carrying American flags. Some were dressed in camouflage. Some had headbands on. They all had weapons in their arms. It was a declared march. They were marching off to war. And these individuals were patriots. Some were young. Some were older men. Some were Vietnam veterans. But they were very passionate. They were resolute in their thinking. And nothing was going to change their mind. And when I saw them marching, I left the motel room where I was and I walked out and I went to the edge of the street and I was shouting to them the same fervency that I had in the first dream. And I was screaming at the top of my lungs, please don't do this. I knew what it meant. What it meant was that the American Civil War was going to start if they continued in what they were doing. And because it was going to start, many of them were going to die. It was not going to end well. Then that dream was over. And then a third dream started. Now in this third dream, I was in Texas. And I was again inside of a building looking out of a window. And I was looking east. And I saw the Astrodome from Houston appear before me. And then I looked a little bit to the north of the Astrodome. And then I saw Joel Olstein's church. It was empty. And as I was looking at these two things, I noticed that I had two or three people in the room with me, also looking out of the window. And I'm not sure who they were, but as I continued to look at Joe Olstein's church, I then picked up some binoculars that I had hanging around my neck, and I looked through them in the same direction. But when the binoculars came to my eyes, the scene changed. The Astrodome disappeared, the church disappeared, and instead there was a new view right before me. And I saw a train that was in motion. It appeared right in front of me, and it was coming towards me. Now, since I was looking through binoculars, this train, it wasn't right in front of me, but these binoculars that I was looking through made the train seem closer. So as I was looking at this train, I asked the people in the room, hey, do you guys see the train? And they said, what are you talking about? We don't see anything. And I said, it's right there. And they said, Nathan, no, it's not. We don't see a train. And the train had two red engines that were pulling a very, very long load. And it started going faster and faster. And as it gained speed, I became concerned. I became nervous. And I said, you guys, do you see what's happening? And then suddenly the train left the tracks and it hopped off of the tracks. And right next to the train, just a few feet away, was the regular highway, a street. And the train derailed and continued to move down the street. It was scraping along the street. And this train must have been going probably 80 to 100 miles an hour. So it was scraping down the street with sparks and it started jackknifing and and the entire thing derailed, scraping down the highway toward me. So as I was watching this happen, I began to become overwhelmed with grief and sorrow. And I asked the people next to me, you guys, this is a, a catastrophe that's happening. The train's crashing. They said, Nathan, We don't see it. There's no train there. We don't know what you're talking about. So I lowered the binoculars and looked out the window. And sure enough, when I lowered the binoculars, there was nothing there. But then when I put the binoculars back to my eyes, there was the scene happening. So then I realized that these binoculars that I was holding were the prophetic tool from God that allowed images and glimpses of things that had not happened yet or that were going to happen. And as I saw this train with two red engines jackknife and scrape down the highway suddenly the street started to buckle and slither up and down in a wavy motion and then suddenly behind the train there was an explosion now since i was looking through binoculars i was no longer looking at the same general vicinity i'm not sure where it was but there were buildings that exploded and there was a fireball it was a terrible catastrophe and then the dream was over I want to talk about the meanings of each one of these. Now, number one, the first dream that I had when the SWAT team and the DHS, the Homeland Security officers, arrived 
to serve the warrant, a battle broke out. But the Patriot group was ready for them, and they fought back. Now, what can that mean? Folks, this is what I get from it. There are going to be outbreaks and clashes of Patriots against government officials. And eventually, at some point, there are going to be some radical Patriot types that are going to say, we're going for broke, and it's not going to matter to them to think logically and rationally, and they're going to fight back. And when this thing happens, now I'm not sure if it's going to actually play out exactly like I saw in the dream in a downtown area, four-story buildings, they ambush the officers. I'm not saying it's going to happen that way, but that's what I saw in my dream. But the conclusion of this whole matter is that a civil war of words is going to become a civil war of action. And when that thing happens, it's going to change everything. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm sharing this because when this thing starts to play out, it is not going to be a good thing because this is exactly what the powers of be want to happen. They want a civil war. They want to see social unrest because they want to have the martial law where everything changes overnight. So I'm very concerned that for those of you that are listening, we have to have the right priorities. We have to have the priorities of Christians that are as innocent as doves, of Christians who put the fruit of the Spirit in the highest priority because folks, prophetically, at some point, this thing's going to go down. And I would hope that every one of you that are listening would take these matters to heart and hear what I have to say. Please do everything within your influence, within your volition, within your will to not take part in something like this because the end result will not be good. We can see what it means. Now, if eventually some kind of ambush occurs, there's going to be blowback. There's going to be a reaction from the government. There will be consequences. Folks, there's always consequences. Those that live by the sword will die by the sword. That's the consequence. But nevertheless, when this thing happens, then my second dream showed what's going to happen next. There's going to be a large assembly of patriots that are going to protest what the government is doing. And if this event starts with some kind of ambush, as I stated, that was round one, but the powers that be aren't going to just sit on their hands and let that happen. They're going to react and they're going to hit back very, very hard because they have the resources. So when they do hit back hard, then the rest of the patriots around the country are going to get upset about it. While all of this is happening on the surface, in the physical realm, behind the scenes, in the spiritual realm, there are going to be powers, minions, evil spirits, demons, who are going to go forth and influence both sides to become bloodthirsty to become angry. They're going to influence both sides to become irrational, to want war, to want bloodshed, to want aggression. When we look at the book of Revelation, we can see that the powers of darkness behind the scenes cause the kings to want to assemble in the valley of Armageddon. Demon spirits are going to influence this. And in the same way here in America, folks, when this civil war comes, there are going to be powers of darkness that are going to influence. So the people that will succumb to this will be those who have the wrong priorities. Because those that have spiritual priorities will have their eyes open and they will be vigilant and discerning and they will not allow themselves to be overcome with the satanic violence. But those who consider themselves part of the remnant, but they say that they're patriots above all, and then everything else falls in line with that, those are the ones that are going to succumb. So in my second dream, I saw the march to war. Folks, this is the bottom line. Satan wants a bloodthirsty civil war. He wants to see Americans against Americans. He wants to see brother against brother. He wants to see Americans fighting one another. So in the second dream, that's why I was begging them not to do it. I was begging them to turn back, but they didn't listen. Now in the dream, I was somewhere in the South. Does that mean that when this thing gets going, when the civil war starts, it's going to happen in the South or the Southwest? I don't know. I'm just sharing what the dream was about. Folks, there are going to be ramifications that are going to be massive. They're going to be huge. It's going to change the laws of America as we know them. It's going to cause a state of emergency. It's going to cause martial law. It's going to cause a new direction for America. Now, for those of you that may remember, Dimitri Dudeman saw many years ago 
a prophetic glimpse of the end of America. And in the glimpse he was shown, he saw civil war also happen. And when the civil war was happening, then that's when America got invaded by the Russians and the Chinese because America had been overwrought with chaos. And that's going to be the final end game for America. America's going to get attacked. And this is why I'm talking about this, folks, because it appears to me that we are getting very, very close to these events coming. My friends, I don't want to see any of you that are regular listeners to be a part of the fallen, but I am very concerned that this is where our nation is headed. If it happens under Obama's watch, Obama's going to be able to enact his martial law, and he's going to be able to suspend the Constitution. This thing is going to play out, and the end game for America is going to be America under tyranny and under police state rule. Now, folks, I know that I have been warning that these things were coming, and I know that I've been warning to get ready, get ready, but now it appears that God is starting to give more glimpses of these horrible things because they're actually getting closer and If they're getting closer, we need to make sure that our hearts and our spiritual condition is at the right place, that we have the right motives. Now, in the third dream that I had when I was in Houston and I saw the Astrodome and Joel Osteen's church and then I looked through the binoculars, first of all, one of the key points of this dream was that God allows his watchmen or whoever he happens to be using at the time, God allows them to use spiritual tools. And those spiritual tools belong to God. They were not made by the person. They were not purchased by the person. God just lets them use them. So in this dream, I was looking through some binoculars that I happened to have. These binoculars were a prophetic looking glass. I was able to see a glimpse. And looking through them was scary. And in my dream, I became upset. And I began to become very sorrowful and overwhelmed with grief because of the catastrophe that I was viewing and witnessing. And folks, I I need to say this. Whenever a person that sees a glimpse of something that is to come sees the glimpse, it's not something that is just some kind of great status type elitist thing. To see God's judgment is not an easy thing, folks. It creates fear. It creates terror. Folks, To see the power of God in judgment is to be able to see God in his true form. That God is a powerful, majestic, awesome, overwhelming God who can melt mountains. And as the Bible says, therefore, knowing the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. Ladies and gentlemen, I've seen the the glimpses of some terrible things. Because of that, I need to try to warn and persuade as many people as I can. So my friends, please get your hearts right. Get your priorities right. And the number one priority is not to just try to fight the New World Order or to be in the Tea Party or to make great speeches that rally others. My friends, the first priority above all is repentance that takes us to the foot of the cross. Repentance that has us looking in the mirror to see that we are undone. Repentance to cry out to God and ask Him to rescue us from the chains of bondage and the strongholds that weigh us down, from the oppressions, from defeat. My friends, some of you have been walking without the victory of God for too long and you've been tolerating it. But it's time for you to get tired of it. Folks, the terror of the Lord is a mighty thing. And I want to persuade you and challenge you that God shows the glimpses of his terror because he also has the remedy. So he showed me a glimpse of terror and I'm sharing it with you, but I'm also presenting this. The loving kindness of God is new every morning and it's available for you, my friend. It's available to pull you back up. It's available to strengthen you and restore you and revive you. And when I saw the third dream, I saw a train with two red engines heading toward me. And after I awakened, I wondered to myself, and I, I've prayed and I've talked to some people. I've asked them about this one, and why red? Well, red represents war. Red represents emergency. Red represents the highest level of alarm. Red also represents communism. And also, ladies and gentlemen, red represents bloodshed. These two trains, they represented several of these things. Maybe all of these things. And they're traveling very fast and they're coming toward us right now. They're barreling 
down the track, they're in the future and they're going to come into our present. And as they arrive, they're eventually going to derail. They're going to lose control and they're going to crash. And when they hit the ground, there's going to be a mighty shaking of the ground. The ground of America, the ground where you walk is going to shake. The ground where we live, where we do our business, where we travel is going to shake. The ground under your house is going to shake. The ground of our possessions, the ground of the land is going to shake. And eventually, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to see an eruption of fire. We're going to see the reaction in catastrophe and in calamity of frenzied fire, of fire that consumes and burns. There are many categories and many areas of our daily life that are going to find themselves consumed. Folks, the future of America is hanging by a thread right now. It's barely hanging on, folks. And when that thread breaks, that red train with two engines is going to crash. Now, is there going to be a train that's going to crash literally that's going to be red? I don't know. Maybe. I do believe that part of the interpretation for this dream is it's going to play out in the spiritual realm. It's going to play out behind the scenes. The red represents the things I mentioned, but it's possible. Another attack that's coming to America is going to involve a train. But out of curiosity, I researched whether there are any train companies that exist that have red engines in It appears that Canada Pacific Railway, their engines are red. So does that mean Canada somehow is going to be involved? That part I don't know. As this thing unfolds, the tyrannical American dictatorship that is going to come requires that laws are passed which will play a role in disarming the patriot population. How are they going to do it? I don't know. But when this thing really gets going, there's going to be resistance. And again, ladies and gentlemen... Based on the Holy Spirit's warning, please stay as innocent as doves. Do not take part in some sort of Ted Nugent type response. Please don't do that, folks. As Christians, we need to trust in God for Holy Spirit, supernatural, miraculous protection from the powers that be. The end result of America is going to be that America is going to turn into a tyrant and the New World Order is going to rise out of the ashes to fulfill Bible prophecy so that Jesus can return. So this thing's not going to be stopped, folks. The new world order will not be stopped. The spirit of Barabbas will not defeat the new world order. It won't happen. Now, does that mean just lay down and take it? That's not what I'm saying, folks. But I'm talking about the civil war. As this thing unfolds, hopefully the Internet will still exist and I'll still be on the air and I'll be able to bring more talking points and more commentary and more interpretation and more words from the Holy Spirit on what needs to happen after new events come forth. So folks, that's another reason that I'm here to continue to break down world events and to continue to share some words from the Spirit and words from God. So please keep us in your prayers and also continue to remember us in in your support. And folks, my plea is that you do not participate. We need to be as innocent as doves. We need to have the discernment from the Holy Spirit. And by the way, what I'm saying right here is not double speak. We need to be as innocent as dust. My friends, they that live by the sword will die by the sword. And the events are going to come. In fact, they're already arriving just in the last few days. I've been watching it just like you have the Boston bombing at the Boston Marathon. Who was behind that? You know, folks, this bombing from Boston could actually be one of the pivotal events that gets us to the things I dreamt about. That's one of my concerns because this thing may be happening quicker than Most of us are prepared to face. Ladies and gentlemen, I see the agenda of hell in motion right now for America. Whether or not there are complicit government officials or there are rogue elements that are involved behind the scenes or it's just evil playing out because Satan wants this thing to get passed. You know, folks, the devil doesn't always need a a false flat inside job for agendas to pass. He can just possess some people to do some crazy, dark, evil things. So for the powers of darkness to get America to this dark new season that is coming, their agenda needs to be in motion even right now to outlaw more things, to change the rules, to change life as we know it. So in conclusion, my friends, you ready to see these changes happen? I know that I mentioned a lot of things. Man, Nathan, this is heavy duty. Folks, I'm sorry, but this is the prophetic warning. It is heavy duty because... 
It's a warning. So take these matters to God. Pray to him. Ask him. Father, do I have to get ready spiritually? Is Nathan right? Ask the Holy Spirit. Let him bear witness with you that these things are approaching. My friends, where's your heart? What do you hope in? What do you trust in? What's your spiritual condition? Are you in fellowship with God right now? Are you like most people? Could be better. No, folks, if that might be you, you're not alone. Most likely, the majority of people listening to this program are in the same condition. Perhaps you're harboring sin. You've been tolerating it, but you haven't been able to overcome it. Or perhaps you have some bitterness that you haven't been able to get victory over. My friends, God sees you where you are, and He's able to meet you where you are. He's able to meet you with His love and with His compassion. And He's able to pull you out of that mire. He's able to pull you out of the struggle. He's able to take you by the hand. He's able to strengthen your feeble knees, your weak arms. He's able to encourage you. It's time to take His hand. Stop pretending that everything's okay when it's not. Because God knows. He knows how you really are. But He still loves you. God sees everything. Ladies and gentlemen, time is running out. Get right, my friend. Get right with Jesus. And then get your last minute items. And folks, my prayer and my challenge for you is that your priorities will be in the right place so that when these events happen, you will not succumb to the temptation. As innocent as doves, my friend. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this program. And Lord, every person that's listening, you see where they are. You see the condition of their hearts. You see their motivations. You see where they struggle. You see where their journey is headed. For those that want to forsake their own way and get on your highway of holiness, for everyone listening, Lord, bring them back. Touch them. Draw them towards you. Draw them towards the cross. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.